my buddy Tank, our buddy Tank, and sometimes they attack my buddy Matt. And Matt's an awesome friend, um, and he's in a very serious relationship with his girlfriend Allie, and she's amazing. Uh, and so I'm texting Matt, like, hey man, Jen's home, this is like 1.30 in the morning. I'm like, uh, Jen's home alone, she's kind of scared. You might go on and sleep over there. <laughs> but this is how you know it's a good friend. You're like, hey, will you go uh, sleep with my wife? <laughs> and he was like, that's fine, should I bring a pillow? I was like, no, dude, you can have the couch or whatever. Uh, so he heads over, simultaneously, our buddy from the ADE heads over, and he sends me this app, or this link to, it's kind of like when you get an Uber or something, and it shows where the car is, but this shows the speed they're going, and since he's like, he was like, no worries, I'm out on patrol anyways, I'll head over, and he texts me this link, and I click on it, and it's the coolest thing, because I showed Jensen, I'm like, check it out, take this thing to my house at 95 miles an hour. <laughs> you have to understand the situation. They're in Austin, uh, yeah. they're doing some renovations in the house, which means there are a lot of workers in and out of that house all day, every day. The alarm system is now down. Uh, the light the power is fluctuating. There was, I'm sure, reasons that the lights were going on and off, but they were going on and off, and she's at home with no protection. Uh, and so, our buddy, our police officer buddy, is aware of the situation, and literally texts him, he's like, hey, Jen's home alone. The lights are going off, she's freaking out. It's one of the points. His response within five seconds was, I'll be there in 10 minutes. <laughs> Which is awesome. So it's nice to know we have friends like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, when we were watching episode three last night, <laughs> Jen was like, yeah, uh, I cannot watch this and have the lights turn on and off <laughs> when you're in a different country. Oh. <laughs> Was she, she said this video, and it's the, the video is of a light switch. And it's just, and then all of a sudden, the lights go on. The lights go off. Light switch. <laughs> See? <laughs> all right, she's not lying. That was freaky. Because you want to, like, you want to be supported by going, like, oh, it's nothing. It's just, uh, the fuse and the niner and the, just go back to that. And so she sends the video, and it's this very, like, it could be a, a shot from Stranger Things. It's like the light switch is in the foreground and the lights in the background, and then it goes from black and white, where it's like the, the sepia tone uh, footage or whatever from a, a night shot to like the lights come on and then back. And, Told you! <laughs> The lights were scary enough. The <laughs> uh, which Eduardo, the beverage director, is coming back to do another episode of the show. That's right. Did you see they're doing a Blair Witch show? Yeah. Why? How is that? Blair Witch Projects? Haven't we seen it? AKA <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ghost Pacers. Okay. Who's, who's doing it? I don't know. John? No. Bueller? Uh, 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 let's get the same question before we just guess. Is it written down in an accent? <laughs> My question is, there's a lot of unexplainable things. That's a statement. On the show. Yeah, it's going to be the best. So, um, one of the things that I find great about the show is that, you know, things like how you guys have charged devices all the time. You know, when Sam uses his laptop for 10 hours in the car. Um, and where, and what I can't understand is, where do you guys get your Wi Fi? <laughs> Are we, are we at liberty to tell her? We have to kill her. <laughs> no, let's tell her the secret. Alright. Um, so, the Winchester Brothers are sponsored by Mofi. Um, and they just plug it in. And AT&T Hotspot. Who are you looking at? No, you know what's funny? They do here in Canada because we, I guess you can go to, I don't know, I thought I was like a Luddite for not knowing this. Um, I wasn't trying to imply that you're not. <laughs> you can go to like wow. ATT and buy like a, help me here. Here's the show. I don't know, I'm swimming backwards. Um, so 
that's the why little thing. It's, it uses data, but it, it gives a signal. So like if you're on a computer and you're a really wide keyboard, because you're like this, it's basically the size of the piano. And you want to adjust like this. Uh, here's your shovel. <laughs> And it broadcasts the signal. That's all I like have. You're driving with me. Answer. <laughs> um, Dean outfitted baby with Wi-Fi two years back. <laughs> Did you see the little antenna on the? Roof? Mm -hmm. yeah. There you go. And we did a house call for one of the sales reps many, many years ago and saved him from a roof roof. Um, and then, so now Sam and Dean have infinite uh, supply of downloadable megabytes. It's also, it's also worth noting, we, we joke around a lot on set, obviously. <laughs> one, of the, one of the running jokes we have is like, getting a fan letter saying like, hey, you know, I understand that, that God came down to earth, possessed the body of a writer, or that Lucifer has moved around, and Sam's died, and now come back soulless and soul. But there was one scene where the light bulb seemed to change from luminescent to light. <laughs> <laughs> I can no longer watch Supernatural. <laughs> you know, people cutting off heads and their mouths still moving, and then sewing it back on. That, duh. I wonder, but now we're getting that question. We're getting that question. And how are they constantly powered up? Which is funny because the power situation, when they cut, uh, our the guy who's in charge of Tommy, Tommy, he comes running on the power cord and puts it in. And then when they're like, okay, lock it up, roll sound, he comes running in, unplugs it, and runs out. It's always like right there, so he'll run in and like, and run off. It's like the, the guys who wait for the tennis balls to hit the net. It's like sitting there, and they call a cut, and it runs it, and it runs off, like six hundred and you know. Because God forbid one day they're like, lock it up, roll sound, and Jared goes, <laughs> Tommy, it's out of power. He'll just walk to the door and keep walking to the parking lot, get in his car, and drive away. But you know what's funny is I also read a story you ever hear about like the band writers that ask for three M&Ms? Yeah. So in a strange way, and I, I actually kind of believe this, they would put it like number 40 or 45 on their list of requests so that if they didn't have three M&Ms, they knew somebody didn't read it. It's like a story about the teacher, like, hey, read this book. And a hundred dollar bill is taped like the third to the last page. And so if they say they read it, they just open it up and they're like, but why is the hundred dollar bill still in the back? Why didn't you take it? So I, I like I like questions like that, like the minutia it means people are paying attention. Because it's not your hundred dollar bill. <laughs> but how did you take it? Here you go. How did you take your hundred dollar bill? You take it and then you put it back. And the person will do it with your things. And that's the excuse I use. That's why I'm a hundred dollar bunch of the And then finish the book. <laughs> Jensen, the book is still taped shut. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Jared, what's the book about? <laughs> Alright, here. Uh, how about there? Yes. So, congratulations on the twins. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my question is for Jared. Is it repeating up to you? <laughs> It's just like one of those shh, 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 shh. compliment sandwich. It's like, listen, it was great, fantastic. My, my issue was uh, this, and he ended with, but again, great. What was the action that missing? With my joy. What would you name Jensen's twins if they were too I'm actually already concerned. Is it known what, what JJ stands for? Yes. yes. What does it stand for? Okay, so I already know. I told him, and I told him it was free of charge. <laughs> but logically speaking, I think it, um, let's say it's a, I, I don't know. You can change the names if it's a boy or a girl or whatever, but we got Justice J. I think mean, we need Kindness Kim and Liberty Larry. <laughs> Oh, Jason.
say is I'll be like, what's up? <laughs> Muscles everywhere. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go away with Liberty Larry. <laughs> it's a nice personality trait. Likeable Larry. Kindness <laughs> <Agnes> Kim. <laughs> This is why Jared's not in charge of the name the names. This is just me. It could be like, Karen Ken. So CK. CK. Yes. Yes. I saw your name first. I also was attracted to the two, not one sunglasses, but two sunglasses. Yes. Oh, you got I got stolen. We'll go to you next. Oh my god. Um, so this is kind of her friend. He's keeps like sending her messages and he's waking up at like 2.56 a.m. He's been going on for months. And hearing this like creepy silence going on. Um, his question um, was basically, what would your advice be? He has no idea what it is. I should know. Okay. Uh, I think it's all day. I can't live with that. Love your honor, but your buddy tells all ten. There's a there's a setting on the phone, and when you set your alarm for two fifty six a.m., just change it to something else. <laughs> when set the time or make it three fifty six a.m. I said change to like three fifty six, so I don't know what happened. Really? Yeah. Is he in the, is he in the time space continuum? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm telling you. A sound wakes him up. Something wakes him up. No, he's, he's usually awake. He's like, There's the first problem. <laughs> <laughs> We're all weird. Yeah. I'm going to go to my friend behind me. Who hit one pair of sunglasses? I don't know. Oh, I liked it. It was good though. Did you see it? She had like, it was like a superhero. Like sunglasses and eyeglasses. And he's a I love it. So um, I'm here with my son, and I just passed it last night to meet my son. And we have a special handshake, so that he knows that you know I love him when I'm out there. Do you do anything special with the kids, like both kids? Um, yeah. Um, there, I, I mean, one thing comes to mind whenever I I leave, uh, just like this morning, about an hour ago, and I was saying goodbye to JJ. She always. And I don't know where she got it from, but every time I say goodbye to her, she says, watch out for the rocks. <laughs> I have no idea what that means or where she got it, but now I've started saying it back to her. So now we say, watch out for the rocks, and then we do, and then we do the same, which is something that my wife and I have always done, which is, we just touch fingers, which is kind of a, a little, I love you. Yeah. And so she's now starting to just, you know, when I say, hey, I love you, she'll put a finger up. And just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's going to be different when my son's going to be like, yeah. <laughs> when, I, when, I, when, I like this, when I left this morning, it's going to be a little more time. It's going to be right. When I left this morning, uh, I was saying bye to Tom and Chef, and we gave each other a big hug, and they go, are you gonna throw rocks at Jensen again? <laughs> we, have, we have more of a morning ritual, uh, <laughs> where I, they usually do have really stinky breath, but I pretend it's super stinky, and so I'll wake up, and I'll, give them, I'll pick them up, and I'll give them a big hug, and then when they go to kiss me, I'll pretend to faint. <laughs> However, it sort of backfired. Uh, we woke up with a four-year-old cat on a stowaway in our bed uh, yesterday, and I'm kind of like kind of groggy, and apparently he's gotten up out of his room and come in and climbed in the bed next to Daddy, and I keep, I keep feeling movement, <laughs> and I'm feeling like a little foot, and I'm like, I don't know, is like jacket? And I wake up, and sure enough, it's Tom, and his face is right there, <laughs> and I'm like, hey, buddy. And every now and then he's going like this. <laughs> and I was like, Tom, what's wrong? He goes, I don't like your hair. It's gross. <laughs> That's his daddy mommy's 
stayed up last night and you were asleep. I had a glass of wine. So, back on. You're a bear. You're a bear. It's gross. Oh, you're a bear. Yes. I was going to ask, uh, how's the
brands or just too cheap when I can call Jack Daniels and be like, hey, can we pay you thousands of dollars to use your name? No. Um, <laughs> then, uh, I don't know, for me, I guess it just depends on what mood I'm in. I like, I like the Scotch stuff and I like the bourbon and American whiskey stuff, so. Um, Angels in me right now. It's good. There you go. It's good. And I'm compelling from the show. <laughs> yes. Yes. There's a there's a deleted scene where his radio goes on the fritz. I do remember that. As he's driving away and his watch has stopped. That was I believe they shot that because they it, I don't think that was in it wasn't in the script. It was just I think originally it was just brothers and Jewish coming back because it was wrong. Uh, then I believe that we shot that in case we needed to explain it further or if the show was short, we needed some extra footage to fill that. Uh, not short. The show was not short. <laughs> What's that? I like your explanation better anyway. So do I. <laughs> um, I think Eric would agree. Um, and my other question though is for Jared. Um, I was wondering if you would tell us a little bit about what you know about Sam's voice. Yeah, I haven't gotten to see it either. It was just a, it was a really kind of bizarre, um, I got a phone call and they were talking about a, a, a French uh, animated flick that they wanted to, to voice over with American actors and I think one of the people had liked the way I sounded for this character and um, we met and shot it at the W Hotel in Austin over a period of like three days in a hotel room. It was kind of a really cool, weird, bizarre experience. But it was the people who together with Cat and Paris. I don't know if you've seen it. It's a really awesome, uh, hand drawn, animated. And I just love the artistry of it. And I was really honored to be part of it. I don't know what's going on with it right now. Are you limited releasing it? Yeah, they keep releasing new locations, but so far yeah. I've got a place that I can actually get to. <laughs> yeah, I want to look into that more. Um, I know it can get pretty quickly because I. I and I told Jesse, because he's done this, I was like, this is so much more difficult. I, I have a complete and utter new kind of respect for voice actors. Um, even so far as like watching Paw Patrol or something animated, I'm like, this is like, it really takes legitimate talent and craftsmanship to do this. Because I was like, I've been acting my entire adult life, and for years before that in school, I was like, it's, it's like swimming or breathing to me. It's just second nature. Uh, but to get into, uh, Kind of character and have to try and voice over in uh, an English language sentence that matches the French language mouth movement. It was, it was bizarre and difficult, and I was like, ah, I was just nervous. Um, but it's cool, I can't wait to see it. Favorite Paw Patrol. Favorite Paw Patrol? Actually, some case, man. Rubble <laughs> on the duck. Rubble on the duck. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's what it's come to. Uh, let's go right there in the end. Yes. Hi. Uh, my question is for Tyler. Awesome. Uh, but Tyler, you were telling a story about your uh, train trip. No. Yeah. Train that wasn't this year. That was a couple years ago. And he's not allowed to tell that story without Richard's face present. Yes. <laughs> We'll tell you later because we've gone hurt. Yeah. Oh, yes. It, it's a doozy, but I would love, I would love, because he was there, I would love to, we'll, we'll take the opportunity because he was there. It was me, Jen, and Richard's mate. He's not here. Uh, he's not, not here. No. No. It's online. <laughs> Heavily documented. I'll tell you later. Uh, when Richard's around, we'll tell him to talk about it. better with Jen, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she called me out. <laughs> Go ahead. I don't like when our witnesses. Last one? One more? No? Last one. Last one? I'll go right here in the front row. Hi. Hi. Um, so, I know that you guys looked like you had a fun weekend at Pebble Beach, and I just wanted to know, um, Jared, did you actually fit in that coop that you guys were pictured with? And <laughs> also wanted to say sorry about your quarterback. <laughs> Sorry, that makes me thrilled. Quarterback. <laughs> Quarterback. Romo? Off the record, I'm, I'm, off the record, I'm happy to see the Cowboys on the new 
leadership, though I don't want, though I'm sad that somebody gets physically injured. Um, oh, he'll be back, don't worry. Okay. Don't you dare say that. <laughs> no, we didn't fit in that car very well. And we, Jensen and I have been successful actors for you know, two decades, and so it's, it's, a, it's an interesting occasion for us to walk around and like put our hands in our pockets because all of these cars are worth our lives, more than our lives. <laughs> like, uh, I can't touch that. And then this German guy comes up, he's like, would you like to sit in my car? We're like, is it gonna cost us? Like, I don't, like I'm gonna break it? Can you open the door for me? And uh, he let us sit in. Well, he, he said, uh, so I walked over and took a picture next to it because the, there was nobody standing next to it. And the car was literally, it came up to here. It was so <laughs> low to the ground. And so I just took a picture like this. And if you look at that picture on my phone, you can see a guy sitting in the background like a little knoll, and it was the owner of the car. And then I just kind of casually walked away. And then we walked back to it for some reason, and he comes walking out and he says, hey, I'm a fan of the show. Uh, I'd love to get a picture of you guys next to the car. And I don't know why I'm like, you mean in the car? <laughs> And I'll say there too. I'm like, yes, he said, he said. <laughs> and, and the guy's like, sure. Uh, and, and then we it's go, very cute. We come to find out it was like one, there's only two in the world. There's only two in the world, and the other one is, uh, they can't find it. They can't find it. Like, it's a, a private collector who never shows it, who just keeps it under a tarp in his garage. He won some, like, overall, I mean, it was amazing. He had, uh, like created over from Germany. It was, and he had a very cute little German act. I don't know what that is. <laughs> uh, continue, please. I wasn't daring to venture into that, but no, you're doing a great job. Uh, it was a good chest. Yeah, that's that one's. I had to lose more. Don't tell him, say, please. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, all right, y'all. We're gonna take off. Thank you for being here. And we'll see y'all in the next